don't know this, this guy can't read. So we got two problems here, and it's all backed and supported by the DNC and white liberal policies. But if you come to this Negro and try to explain that to him, what he's going to say is, well, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't back either party because the Republicans are just as bad. Well, wait a minute, Negro. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on, brother. At what point can you say that? At what point can you say that the Republican Party is just as bad as the Democratic Party as far as you're concerned when for the last 20 or 30 years, Negro, that's all you've been voting is Democrat. So at what point did you give the Republicans a chance? You haven't given them a chance. You followed the talking points from your political slave master. You can't, you don't even know what the Republicans will do for you because you ain't gave them a chance. You only vote for them 6% in every election. I believe George Bush got 8% of the black vote. The last president that got double digits in black support was Richard Nixon, and I believe it was somewhere around 30, 32%. You Negroes don't vote for Republicans. So how the hell can you even sit here and begin to say what they would do for you? And then once you understand the political game, Negro, then you have to understand that at what point do you not get that they don't have no onus to do anything for you? You don't vote for them. You don't support their campaigns. You don't support their candidates. You don't donate money to their uh, uh, finances. You don't do nothing for them. So now once he gets in office as a Republican, here you come with your hand out. What, what, what you want me to do for you, Negro? This is the game. This is how it's played. Everybody understands this, but you, Negro. He ain't got time to do nothing for you. That president is going to be concerned, or that whoever politician, if he's voted in as a Republican, he's going to be concerned dealing with the people that voted for him. People who donated money to his campaign. People that went out and knocked on doors for him. People who went out and passed out leaflets. Those are the people's issues that he's going to adhere to first. This is how the game is played. This is the reason why I tell you, Negroes, that y'all's anger shouldn't be with the Republicans. It really shouldn't. You Negroes need to be mad at the political party that you give 90% of your vote to. Hey. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. It's, it's a tough job that somebody got to do it. But let me get back to my point. This is the reason why I, I say to y'all, and I've used this analogy. If, I, if, I, if I'm doing some work, say you're you working on a car, and you got a guy, you're going to pay a guy, and I'm just throwing numbers out there. You probably will pay, obviously you will pay him more. Let's say you give a guy $90 to overhaul your engine. All right? You pay a guy $6 to, to, you know, change your tires, rotate your tires. Now, these are just numbers. I'm making a point. Neither one of these guys do what they're supposed to do. Now, who are you going to be most mad at? You're going to be mad at the guy that you only gave $6 to? Or are you going to be angry with the guy that you gave $9 to? I mean, it's really simple. It's not, I mean, it's, it goes back to the old age when we were in school. If Johnny has three apples and he gives Sally one, how many apples does Johnny have left? And how many apples does Sally now have if Johnny gives her one of his three apples? I mean, it's just that simple. And I don't know why you Negroes can't get it. You Negroes vote for the DNC 90% of every election, yet y'all pissed off with the Republicans who y'all give 6% of y'all vote. It just don't make sense. It just don't make sense. And one day you Negroes will connect these dots. But until you do, you need to make a New Year's resolution, Negro, that you're going to stop supporting this DNC 90% of every election and don't get nothing in return. You know what to do? Another New Year's resolution. Just, you know, since we're in the business of making New Year's resolutions, let's make another one. Because I got a whole list of them. I, actually, hell, this could be a four-part series video in and of itself. Giving you Negroes resolutions that y'all need to do to clean up your goddamn community. But let's make another New Year's resolution. Let's see. What can we do? We dealt with politics. Touched upon education a little bit. Let me see. Oh, hell, how could I forget? You Negroes need to also make a New Year's resolution. That you are going to stop supporting these crack houses on every corner in your community. I think y'all call them churches. 
stained crack houses with stained glass windows because the dope that's coming out those institutions is more lethal than any crack that you'll find on the street. And you Negroes have gotten hooked by it and you get nothing in return. It baffles me. I just don't understand it. I, I sit back and I've talked to many women, a lot of women, black women that I know, all go to church. Professional black women, working hard, doing, went to school, got their degree, working in their career, yet and still, they're handing over money, hand over fist, to this pimp, to this Negro pastor. Now, I don't even know some women who may catch public transportation or if they're driving, their car is not up to par, it's always breaking down, they need somebody to fix it, yada, yada, yada. Yet and still, you give this guy 10% of your gross. And see, that's what you Negroes need to catch. This Negro church ain't asking for 10% of your take home. No, 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 no. Give me that 10% off the top. Give it to me from the gross. Before those taxes and the federal government start extrapolating, they just, they, our hands is in that pot too. We want 10% of your gross. I even know some of these Negro churches that require their members to bring in their pay stubs. During tax time, you have to take your taxes in to show that you're actually paying your proper 10%. I know churches like this. I know Negro women who do this. But what do you Negroes get from these institutions? Your community looks like a war zone and you have a black church on every fucking corner. And I told you, Negroes, two of the major institutions that manipulate and mistreat black women are Arab and Lebanese corner-owned stores and the black church. Actually, I believe they're neck and neck. It's a photo finish. You would have to take that photo and have it examined to see who actually won, who's actually the winner between Arab and Lebanese corner-owned stores in this Negro church to see who exploits black women the worst because both of them do it. And it, it ain't no secret. Everybody knows this. But yet and still, you Negroes still support that institution. And if you black men, see, this, this is where I, I say about you brothers. See, all you Negroes who are quick to, this again, <laughs> this is an epiphany again. This is the reason why I do not waste my time arguing with Negroes on YouTube. You can disagree with my videos. I have no problem with that. And I've often said, if you follow my blog, there's a way that you can leave your uh, uh, comment where you can you leave it anonymous. I could set it to where you would have to leave a name or an email address, a, a real email address, no trolling. But I got it set to where you can leave it anonymous, you can leave it blank. I don't care what you say. And I'm not going to engage you. And the reason why I've done that is because of the fact that I know for the most part, black men, as I've been saying, don't have critical thinking skills. They can't connect the dots. They sit back and they support this buffoonery. But yet y'all want to come to me and criticize me on the things that I'm saying about black women. I don't exploit these sisters. The worst thing, and I know this for a fact, the worst thing that any black female that I've ever dated, and this is what they will say about me, and I know this for a fact because I've talked to them and they've even told me. Some of them I'm still friends with. I don't like your political views, I don't like your religious views, and I don't like them goddamn cigars. But no black woman could come to you and tell you he cheats on me, he hit on me, you know. he No, I ain't got time for that. I don't even want to deal with one of black women, much less two. I don't need that shit. I don't need to have a whole bunch of women coming and going. I ain't got time for that. And you'll see why I deal with that in my private video on why I don't kiss black women. Put a plug in for that. But these brothers will come and criticize and say, you saying stuff that's hard about black women and, and, and it's degrading the black women. Well, wait a minute, brother. Wait a minute. What's worse, verbal or the actual act? Which is worse? Now, can you... I mean, you you sitting around talking about, yeah, I'm going to rape that woman. I'm going to rape her if I get a chance. Okay, it's questionable. Somebody can bring that up and be like, how can you sit there and talk about you going to rape a woman? But you can't be arrested for talking about it. It's not a crime. But now what if you went out and actually raped a female? Which is worse? So now you got a brother who actually went and physically raped a female as opposed to a brother who's just sitting there talking about it, but yet you Negroes want to go, well, you talking about raping black women. You talking about raping black women. Wait a minute, brother. What about the guy that's actually raped a black woman? What you got to say about him? And see, this is essentially what y'all do when y'all come to me. Y'all come to me on things that I'm saying. 
But y'all don't go confront these brothers who are actually engaged in manipulating, pimping your mothers, your grandmothers, your sisters, your girlfriends, and your fiancés. Y'all don't say nothing to those clowns. But you want to come and talk to me, and I'm just the, I'm the, like the guy who's just sitting here talking about it. Y'all, y'all, oh, that's degrading, that's degrading. Well, it's much more degrading for this pastor to be married with a wife and a house full of kids to be fucking the choir member who happens to be your sister, your girlfriend. You know, he impregnates her. Now he ain't, and if you do like Jesse Jackson, hell, when he got his secretary pregnant, he went and asked the woman to have an abortion and still wasn't paying child support. This is Jesse Jackson, but y'all don't go to him and say, listen, man, you've been married, you in your 60s. How? I mean, good God, man, if you're 63 years old, wrap that goddamn thing up. How can you sit here and talk to these young brothers about impregnating these women? You're 63 years old and you fucking your secretary and you don't even take time to wrap your shit up. But y'all going to talk about the brother that's just talking about it. But y'all ain't got nothing to say to the people who's actually engaged in it. This is the reason why I don't pay you Negroes no attention. Let's deal with the final resolution that you Negroes need to make in your community if you want to try to make things di different. Let me see. Dealt with politics. Dealt with education a little bit. Got the black church. Mm -hmm. Oh hell, how could I forget this? Here's another resolution that you, and this is particularly to black men. You Negroes need to make a resolution in 2014 that you are going to no longer allow your dick to think for you. That's right. It's high time, brother, brothers, that y'all gain control over your lower half. I know she has a big ass. And look, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I like looking at a sister with a big ass and a tight skirt, heels. I mean, I'm going to look because I'm a man. I mean, I'm going to look at her. I would date her, but I'm going to look at it. I mean, she can date somebody else. I'm just going to look. That's why I wear these sometimes. But anyway, I'm going to look. But you Negroes are engaging in activities with these women. And you know these women ain't got nothing off. You know they ain't bringing nothing to the table but that ass. But y'all still go get involved with them because why? She looks good. You thinking with the wrong head. Your New Year's resolution should be, you know what? I'm going to gain control of my dick and I'm not going to allow my dick to do the thinking for me. I'm going to think with the right head. I'm going to stop getting involved with these sisters. I'm going to work on bettering myself. I'm going back to school. I'm going to finish my degree. I'm going to work on myself and I'm going to do for self. And then if some woman comes along and she has as much that I have, then we can hook up and we can do something. But the time is far spent to deal with these sisters who ain't bringing nothing to the table but the size of their ass. And I don't know who sang the song, but you know, hell, hey, when they, I can't remember, and y'all, some of y'all can put it in, in my comment section. Who sang that song? The woman who said, ain't nothing going on but the rent. You got to have a J-O-B if you want to get with me. This is what she said. This is back in the 60s, I believe it was. I can't remember the girl's name. Some of y'all probably know the song I'm talking about. But this is what time it is, brother. It's time for you to clean your act up. To straighten your head up, brother. And get your shit together. And stop messing around with these heifers. Because these heifers, it will get you in a lot of trouble. And they've got you in a lot of trouble. Dealing with these nappy head heifers. And, when I, and again, I have to preface this because when I always talk about black women, people immediately think I'm talking about hood rats. I don't deal with hood rats. I don't associate with hood rats. I'm talking about professional sisters because they hood rats too. Matter of fact, they're worse because they hide their wretchedness behind college degrees and careers. But they're every bit as a hood rat as that heifer standing in that Arab store selling her food stamps. And you got to understand this. This should be your New Year's resolution. I am going to finally control this dick and stop allowing it to get me into trouble with these hoes. Now, I know y'all not going to like how that's worded. But at the end of the day, <laughs> y'all know. It is. Tell what it is. 